Hello there. I find myself in an isolated place, very quiet, um, able to enjoy nature all around me. And I figure I'll go ahead and take a moment to uh, drop this brief video to just briefly discuss um, what one might do if you are facing a personal storm in your life. Now, this is one of those areas in which I mentioned earlier that I find the Bible very effective when it comes to helping people out of their crisis or certain situations they may find themselves in, um, or life's storms, in other words. So, there is one particular storm that comes up in the Bible book of Acts. Acts chapter 27 and you know that Acts is all about the Acts of the Apostles and in this particular account it deals with a storm that came upon a ship while Paul and other prisoners were sailing remember my introductory video I said I would be mentioning something about sailing and this is that video. Now, the Apostle Paul and others who were prisoners were sailing from, according to the book of Acts, according to the narrative there in chapter 27, they were sailing into Rome to stand before Caesar. And they were put on a large vessel that was headed through the Mediterranean. Um, and a, a big storm seized upon them. A storm that one Bible translation at least calls the storm called Euro Aquilo. Another Bible translation may render it the um, Gregeo. It goes by various names depending on uh, which resource you're referencing or which Bible translation you're reading. So, anyway, they were seized upon by this big storm. Um, nor'easter, Gregel, Euro Aquilo, and they did everything they could to navigate that storm. And as I read that Bible account many years ago, it occurs to me that I can use some of the things that they did in principle to help me navigate my own storms. Now, you might want to read through Acts chapter 27 to get the tidbits that I'm about to share with you, but I find some of these very helpful for me. I found them because I've gone through various storms in my life most recently as well. Going through a huge storm in my life that almost killed me, quite literally. And I'll get to that in another video for sure. So hopefully you'll find maybe this helpful in your life. All right, so the storm came upon them, and the various things they did, uh, according to the narrative there in Acts chapter 27, is they, at one point, they just dropped their sails, and they were driven along by the storm. They just let the storm carry them with as much um, control over their vessel as they could but they weren't trying to fight against the natural push of the storm. Now, I find that very effective in life sometimes because sometimes our storms in our lives are so big, so ravaging, that it's hard for us to gain our traction. It's hard for us to gain our footing. It's hard for us to keep pace with the volume, with the magnitude of the storm. And there are times that we have to just give way. There are some times we have to give way, let life happen organically and naturally, although it feels oftentimes scary. But oftentimes it's important to just give way and let life transpire. When those times are, it's up to you to decide. And don't mistake in that though, for giving up. Giving way does not mean giving up. Oftentimes giving up is defined as and is demonstrated by one's 
exiting this life prematurely at their own hands. Do not give up. The storm will rage for a time and then you'll get a breakthrough. Then the storm will stop raging. I'll get back to that in a moment. One of the other things they did in the storm to navigate this storm, this Eur Aquilo, this Gregale, this Nor'easter, is they threw over tackling. They threw also over their resources of the boat, their food and so forth, some of it, to lighten the ship. There are times where we go through life and we are burdened down with so much that we need to lighten our ship, so to speak. We need to lighten our load. There are times we need to decide what is it that's crucial at this moment in our life. When they packed the boat, of course they had all their life's essentials. By the time they got to where they were going, you'll find that at the end of this brief little video, that they had nothing in hand except their lives. But in the meantime, they had to lighten the ship. Their food at the moment, their resources at the moment, their tackling at the moment, was not as important as their current lives at that very moment. So they had to lighten the ship and let go of things in their lives that at one point feels critical and important, but at this particular moment in that Mediterranean, they needed to save their lives first. So there are times in your life that you feel like you gotta hold on to this and this and this. In point of fact, you have to let go of this and this and hold on to this, this being probably just your life and your sanity and your well-being. Sometimes storms call for us to let go of that which was important before, but not so important right now. Now, what does that mean for you in your own storm? You have to decide that for yourself. And talk to friends, those who you trust, and they can help you with that as well. Now, all of these individuals on the boat including the Apostle Paul, were all prisoners. So they had to work together. They had to come to a general consensus to decide how they were going to survive together. So get with friends who can help you make decisions that are wise for you and that are life-saving in your storm. Another thing they did, which I found very interesting, is, you know, back in those days, and perhaps now too in certain areas, boats are made with planks. So just imagine my fingers um, representing the planks of a boat. They come together and the boat looks like this, right? Looks like this. And that's where they all are sailing. They're sailing along. Now the storm was so violent, it came to a point where the planks started to, along the bottom of the boat, started to come apart like this. So they needed to do something. The narrative says that what they did is they, uh, two individuals, in essence, I guess it was two, had straps of some sort and each of them will walk forward carrying the strap they would drop it over the front of the boat and work it through to the middle or so to wherever they need it and bring them together winch them tight to bring those boards back together to undergird that boat to keep that boat together um, one Bible translation calls that device that they use it calls them helps I like that particular wording they used helps to undergird their boat. I like that wording because there are times in our lives that we're facing our storm and sometimes we feel like we have to go it alone. But in essence, there are others who are there to help us to undergird our own ship, our own selves. And there are tools that are at our disposal that maybe we may not be aware of that are there to help undergird our boat too. So use your helps, whatever your helps are. And this is why counselors and such they suggest that you go to um, other counselors, group therapies, self-help groups, someone though who has the training to facilitate these type of discussions, to identify where your helps are in life that you may not be aware of, that can help your boat come back together as you navigate your storm, but to help you stay mentally stable in order to navigate your storm. Find your helps. Some people find them in um, church leaders or religious leaders. Some people find them in 
other readings. Some people find them in mental health professionals. Um, your parents, your children, your best friend, whoever, find those helps to, to undergird your boat, whatever those might be. And you might need some assistance in putting those in your life, bringing them forward in order to help you bring your boat together. So talk to those who might know uh, how you might best use helps to bring your life back together. Your storm will continue to rage but you will be together able to navigate that storm. Find your helps to undergird your boat. All right. Three more things I'd like to mention that they did in that account in Acts chapter 27 to help navigate that storm. One thing they did was they ate. They ate. Paul, interestingly enough, was, according to that narrative, the only one who was serving a particular God. The others weren't necessarily serving that same God that Paul was serving. You know, his God felt like to Paul to be the true God. And he came to them one day because they were out on the Mediterranean for a while. He came to them one day, the storm was still raging, and he said to them, be of good courage. Be courageous, men. We are going to live. And the reason we're going to live, the reason I know we're going to live, is because the true God whom I serve, this is Paul speaking, uh, had an angel come down to me last night and tell me that we will survive. We're going to lose the boat. We're going to run ashore. We're going to lose our boat. But we're going to get our lives. So be of good courage. We're going to stand before Caesar. We're going to make our destination. So be of courage, but eat. He told them to eat, so take nourishment. And so all that they did not throw overboard, they were still able to eat, keep their strength. So that's important too. Keeping your strength is very important. And this means good diet, good exercise, good sleep. Those are the, that's a powerful trifecta in our health and well-being, isn't it? Mental health and otherwise. It's a powerful trifecta. Not the only things, naturally. But a powerful trifecta is diet. Good diet. Sleep and exercise. Keep your strength up. That's important. Because here's the reality. As bad as storms are, they all come to an end. All of them. No matter what it destroys in its wake, they all come to an end. And we could be there at the end to see the sun shine again. We can. But one very important thing is for us to keep our strength up. Diet and exercise and, and uh, rest, sleep. That's important, okay? That's one thing, eat. During that dialogue where the Apostle Paul was talking to them about eating, he mentioned, this happened to be one of my favorite scriptures years ago, Acts chapter 27, verse 25, happened to mention that the Apostle Paul said, you know, when he mentioned the true God told me by way of an angel that we're all going to make it through this. Verse 25 said, I believe God. That's how one Bible translation rendered it. I believe God. Three simple words. And during the time where I was in that same mindset, I found that to be the most powerful three words in the whole Bible. Now, <clears throat> this posting is not to encourage you to follow that frame of thought. I believe God. Now, if that's what you want to do, do it and do it well. Believe God if that's what you believe. But the point I'm making with this is whatever you believe, believe it strongly. Unless it's limiting beliefs, self-limiting beliefs, and self-destructive. If it's a belief that's going to move you through your storm, hold on to that belief because that belief 
say, be it from God, your whoever, your friend, your counselor, or whoever, this belief of your survival, of your making it through this, is critical to your making it through it. Belief is strong. Doesn't make it always real, but it makes a big difference in how you navigate your storm. Some people navigate their storm with fear and, and terror. And their mind then is not so sharp. Some people navigate it with courage and belief that they're going to make it. And that, has, that goes a long way. That goes a long way. Belief. Strong. Okay? The last thing that I just want to mention from that account is, yes, they, they did lose the boat. They came close to shore and they ran ashore and the the surge of the water was just so intense it destroyed the boat it destroyed the boat the pounding waves the surf destroyed the boat they came close to shore and this is exactly what happened The last thing one of the uh, people there on the boat told the men to do is to grab hold to a part of the boat, one of the planks or some other part of the boat that was destroyed now in the surf. Grab hold to one of those planks. If you know how to swim, swim to shore. It's right there. If you don't know how to swim, grab hold to a plank or part of the boat that has been destroyed and now all these pieces are in the surf grab hold to something and swim with it let this keep you afloat and go so you still need to work for your for your safety for your uh, making it through this but the last ditch effort do not feel because your boat has come apart whatever that is that's moving you through life do not feel that that's the end of it there's one more final push. Grab that plank. Whatever that plank is goes back to the helps, doesn't it? When your boat was together, the help held it, keep it together. When it came apart, sometimes our life just comes unglued. Sometimes it does. You lose all your friends. You lose all your family. Everyone, who, your social structure that you were riding with, the ride and die crew, the ride, what do they call it? The ride or die crew? <laughs> Those people who were with you from the beginning have now abandoned you. Now your life has pretty much come unglued from your perspective. What do you do? That last ditch effort, that plank, because the shore is right there. Right there. Grab hold to your plank, whatever that plank is, whatever that part of that life is that you can hold on to, hold on to it, help you get to shore. And as it turns out, they were shipwrecked on Malta. And eventually, though, they were able to leave Malta and keep on their journey and stand before Caesar. Paul was right. Paul was right. Incidentally, Paul did tell them, Hey, guys, I told you this is not a good sailing uh, season right now. We should, we should not get underway. Paul told them that. Now, he, it wasn't an I told you so moment, but it was definitely an I told you so moment. Paul wasn't rubbing it in their faces, but he told them, I told you not to set sail because I was reading the skies. I was reading the conditions. I know the time of year. Um, these men, of course, the captain of the boat and the, uh, the other hands, they were experienced sailors too. And they, no, Paul, you're, you're going to be all right. They didn't listen to him. Listen very carefully. To your conscience but also listen very carefully to others words you may not think they have much value but you never know who's giving you advice that can help you, you never know pay attention keep your eyes out there in your ears as well pay attention so the Apostle Paul did give them good advice they didn't heed it and this is the condition they found themselves in but
they all survived. They eventually left that island on which they were shipwrecked and they made it to their destination. Here's the point. You will make it to your destination. Whatever that destination is, you will make it. Find helps. Lighten your load if necessary. Listen to those who have good advice for you. Not self-limiting beliefs. Not limiting beliefs. Not dependent type of talk. But that which is going to make you really thrive. That is going to make you, when you are in the water by yourself, you hang on to something that's going to get you to shore. Because we're all in it together on one hand, but we all have to fight our own battle on the other. It's going to be me that survives. It's going to be you that survives. And you will survive. Okay? That's my story on sailing. I thought Acts chapter 27 is one of my favorite accounts. I just wanted to share that with you all. All right? All right. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe. Share this with 10 friends. Thumbs up. If you feel it. Thumbs down. If that's what you feel too. Either way, thank you for hanging in here with me to the end of this. You have yourself a tremendous day. And remember, storms, no matter how bad, they always come to an end. Always. And we can live to see the sunshine again, just like now. All right. Bye-bye for now.